Want to know how to model hard surface paneling detail like this in Maya? Then, you know what? I'm tired of you. Been working, just doing these tutorials. Never just get the thanks. Always complaining. Oh, you don't like it? You're going to go to the other channel and unsubscribe? Okay, then I'll see how it is. Well, forget you. I got an Xbox match that needs attending anyways. I'm out of here. Don't wait for me to come home. You know what? I'm sorry. I've just been working so hard and I've just been a little bit stressed. You don't know how much you mean to me. And I really mean that. And I'm sorry for hurting your feelings and I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the tutorial because you mean so much to me so please uh, stick around for this Maya hard surface modeling tutorial coming Give that man an Oscar because he could act. What's going on, you 3D modeling beast? This is JL Musi, and today we are talking about creating hard surface paneling detail like this within Maya. How this video came about is that I had a subscriber reach out to me and they wanted to know how to create this paneling detail off an existing shape. And this seemed a little bit more complex than just creating it from a flat plane and extruding in or out. So I decided to break down my workflow, answer this question, and also share the video with you guys. And I think you guys will find value in it and learn some new tips along the way. Also consider subscribing if you're new around here as I do Maya hard surface modeling tutorials like this all the time. And if you want to get better and faster at hard surface modeling within Maya, go ahead and download my hard surface modeling cheat sheets, which is a perfect companion piece to my videos. It is a short PDF guide. The great thing about the guide is that it contains links to timestamp parts within my YouTube videos. Shall you need more information on those sections? And you can go ahead and download the guide by clicking the link down below and I will also link it on the YouTube card. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And for this tutorial, I'm gonna go rather quickly. So I'm not gonna go ahead and stop and show you every menu command. That's because most of my menu commands that I do use are actually already hotkeyed for me. But I will actually show you the menu command in a small callout card so you know how to access a tool if you didn't uh, previously. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a cube here and I'll start out. I'm just gonna select these verts, scale up. So something like this and I'm gonna go ahead and gut these out since I'm creating a shell pretty much. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and apply that initial shape, which is pretty much just an edge. And then from that edge, what I can do is just select it, bevel it to get some width. Obviously I could have just dropped two independent edges. It's pretty much the same at the end of the day and just kind of uh, matching that overall uh, panel, that initial panel uh, width. So from there, I'm just going to go ahead and take the faces, extrude in, play with the thickness, just bring that in a little bit. All right. And then anytime that we extrude in and we're working with symmetry, we usually got to do a little bit of work around those edges. So I'm going to take that out. And that bottom edge seems to have kind of an initial slant. So I'm gonna take it, just eyeball, just a slant, something like this. And this looks a little bit too deep. So what I could do is just take it and with the scale tool, right? We don't wanna play with uh, these right here since we'll be actually messing up this top edge. So what I'll do is 
I want to leave the Y, right? If we look at this, see the Y is influencing this, right? So what we could do is leave the Y axis out of the scale and just basically uh, scale this way, right? And now you see that uh, I'm not basically altering here in the, uh, the Y direction, which is pretty much what we wanted. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the multi-cut tool. So what I can do from here is just cut into the shape, just glancing at my uh, reference here. And then from here, what we could do is just bevel this edge, right? And then we just get that thickness, that initial thickness that we want. So I'm happy with that. So from here, I'm gonna go back into the multi-cut and I'm gonna connect this. So if we do control shift, you see that we can get a nice uh, 90 degree angle on the multi-cut. And that saves us a little bit of time from just having to go back and straighten edges manually if we lay those down pretty much straight. Do the same thing here and then here as well. So I'm doing control shift you'll see that uh, green box pop up. That means you're snapping to 90 degree angles. So we're looking pretty good here. Now here we do have a, kind of a break in that a slant. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop an edge loop there. And then what I can do is move this. And actually I'm gonna move this guy. I don't, I don't wanna break the thickness of that, um, that panel right there. So what I can do is move this guy here, and then I can take this edge, hit, hit D, and then V to snap here. So we wanna actually straighten from here. So we're, we're making sure that uh, edge is nice and straight. And what we could also do is just redo that. And now we'll just straighten from this vert. Now we have a nice straight edge. All right, so that's the first setup. And then from here, we're gonna take this guy here and this guy here and delete it. And now we can go ahead and take these guys and then we'll extrude, move it out manually. So I just did an extrude, I hit W key, that enables my uh, move tool. And then what I can do from this point, uh, I could go into the uh, side views, but another way that you could just make sure that these actually snap is hit D again, V to a uh, vert snap to this vert. We'll hit W again. And now if we hit V, we're just vert snapping these faces to that one vert. So there's no need to actually uh, go into any other views. And then we need to take this guy out. And then probably could have did that beforehand, but we could just go on this side as well and then delete that face, right? So we're nice and clean. So remember anytime that you extrude, you want to just kind of go around and make sure that all the faces that need to be deleted are before you emerge any verts. Same thing, I'll hit D and then I'll hit V, vert snap here, W to enable the move tool, V will snap there. So that's looking pretty good. And we're going to fix this slant in a second. But for now, we'll go ahead and take these verts and just merge them. And then what I can do is just take this vert here, I'll jump over to uh, my side view, W, we can go into wireframe, just kind of move this guy back. Probably could select these guys too, and just kind of do both at the same time, and just get that right slant. If you really wanted to be really, really precise, you could um, you know, drop like a edge here, and then you could basically snap that vert as you move, but I'm not gonna do that. I think with just uh, eyeballing it and getting close, we'll get a pretty precise move. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and go to shading, wireframe on shaded. So here we have a little bit of break because we're manually dealing with this. So essentially we wanna match this angle to this face. So what we could do, is again with the scale tool that'll help us out. So we could select both of these faces here and then we could hit D and then we can go ahead and snap this pivot here, right? So we could scale from this pivot. Then we can go into our scale tool. If we hit D again, 
and we hold down control, we could actually orient the pivot uh, to this uh, face right here, right? So you see that uh, this manipulator is aligned to this face. So now when we scale, you see that we're basically flattening along this, right? And if we lose up any of the straightness here on this top edge, it's fine because we could just go in here, right? And then we could just scale flat and we'll just uh, get that straight edge back. So I'm gonna take this guy here and just push a little bit just to make this panel or this, uh, this bar right here a little bit thicker. And then from here, we could just move this guy here and this guy here. And if you needed to be, like I get, like I said, if you needed to be really precise and you definitely wanted a straight edge, you could select both of these, scale tool. So we hit D, right, V, and then we would just scale from that vert. And we would do the same thing here. We hit D, V, snap, scale tool, and now we're, we're straight on that edge, all right? So now it's time to add some holding edges and the multi-cut, if you watch my videos, you know that for holding edges, it'll average things out and I really don't like that. And I don't think, I played around, I haven't found a setting to take that average off. So what I actually use is the multi-cut tool and that's gonna give me a straight edge uh, from any other edge. So I'm gonna just add some holding edges So I'm basically gonna reinforce uh, each edge here from both sides. So this is looking pretty good. So this is like the first leg right here. So really uh, the, the bulk of the work is done. As usual, I like to basically take off wireframe on shaded and then uh, I like to basically assign a blend. Uh, blend is just gonna have more specular uh, highlights and any pinching will be easier exposed. But that looks pretty clean. So from here, I'm just gonna show you how to create um, a repeatable pattern, which is something that I usually do, especially when things need to repeat. Uh, so here what I'll do is uh, insert a edge loop right about here. And then I can just take my trusty scale tool, scale flat. And then from here, I can take that edge and I'll go to detach. And I can just double click this and delete. Uh, so now we have a nice symmetry line and we can do our first initial uh, mirror. So I'll take this. And then since we're not in the world, right, we, we didn't build this in the world. What I can do is just move this pivot from the point that I want to mirror. And then I'll go ahead and mirror this guy, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this down to zero and then just use a lower threshold. And that's kind of our initial uh, mirror. Um, if, if this uh, pattern looks a little bit too thick, we could go ahead and play with the offset. And then we can play with the merge threshold uh, to just kind of update it, right? So from here we have that first chunk of pattern and if we wanted to repeat it, uh, it would be quite easy. Um, all we would do is just kind of gut out this uh, back part. So I'm gonna do so. So I'm gonna delete these guys here. So I'll select and then deselect, delete. And then what I can do is just select my verts here, scale flat, right? So from this point, we could do another mirror. So I'll hit D, V, vert snap here. And from this point, I could just do another mirror. So that looks pretty good. All right, so we symmetrize this guy over, um, and then you see that we do have some over pinching here. So you could just go to your history and then just bring this merge threshold just uh, down a little bit and use a lower tolerance. Now if we go to object mode and we hit three, that is our pattern completed. And uh, this is a quick tip. If you wanna get um, like some nice uh, renders just from the viewport, especially if you're going to three mode and you wanna uh, display that, 
I think this is a good way, but uh, if you go here and you're on wireframe on shaded, you see that we're gonna get, uh, these wireframes are not as smooth. So what you could do is you can go, if you're using um, viewport 2.0, you could just hit the option box and you go to anti-aliasing and then uh, do uh, anti-aliasing right here and you, you toggle that, you see the difference that it makes. It gives you a nicer result, especially if you're doing screen grabs or quick uh, you know, screenshots of your wireframes. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the tutorial, what you thought about your boy's acting skills. Also, uh, please consider sharing this with any other 3D artists that might find value in the video. As always, like and subscribe to my channel and I will catch you next time.